Matthew the 11th chapter. I hope you have your Bible tonight. The 11th chapter and the 28th verse come unto me. All ye in labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. When Jesus said, Come unto me in this passage, that's the first invitation that he gave in his life. Come unto me. Then he said all you that labor, that means all of you that are overworked, the toil of the person that can find no rest, and are heavy laden. Those are the people that perhaps are unemployed. They are loaded down with the burden of life and trying to support a family or maybe in a family in which there's unemployment. And he says, I'll give you rest, which means the rest of refreshment, not the rest of doing nothing, but the rest of refreshment, serving him. Professor Barclay, who's gone on to be with the Lord from Glasgow, said that this invitation is to men and women who are exhausted with the search for truth. In other words, maybe all your life you've been searching for truth, Jesus said your search has ended. I am the truth. And that was the great question I had to wrestle with when I came to Christ. After I came to Christ, actually, was he the truth? He says, I am the embodiment of all truth. And as I said, the other evening he was either insane or he was or alive. he's who he claims to be. I had to make that decision. Is he who he claims to be? And when I said yes, I believe he is who he claims to be, the embodiment of all truth, the Son of God. It settled for me, and I want to tell you since that time, I've never had a doubt about Jesus Christ. I know he's the Son of God, I know. By that experience, but I also know, in my heart through the experience of life. Jesus is claiming that the weary search for God ends in himself, and then he said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me if I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest under your souls, for my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. What did it mean? Well, in those days they would tie an oxen together, they would yoke them together. They'd get an old oxen who was experienced, and they'd get a new one who was inexperienced, a young one, so that the young one could learn from the older one. Now Jesus said, I will yoke my life to yours, we will yoke together, and it won't be so hard in life for you, if you come to me. And my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. And all over the world, people are beginning to ask questions about where is civilization going. On the other hand, is a new surge of personal problems. In the story of the prodigal son, we learn that when we leave God, our troubles begin. When we return to him, our joys begin. In America, psychologists and economists encouraging. Politicians are dealing with social and psychological and spiritual problems, such as unemployment, marriage tension, breakups of marriage, racial tensions, inflation, making ends meet, boredom, lawlessness. And so millions become alcoholics in my country. They become drug addicts. We have 100 suicides a day in America. And a recent press report says that about 5,000 a year in Britain commit suicide but 30,000 attempted. And more than drugs and sex or alcohol can provide. Because they cannot provide the satisfaction and the fulfillment that you're looking for. Isaiah the prophet 800 years before Christ said even the young people shall faint and be weary, and the young people shall utterly fall. In other words, he's prophesying that there's coming a day when even young people are going to faint when they see what's happening in the world, and they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with the wings of eagles, they shall run and not be weary, and they should walk and not faint. In other words, come to Christ, come to God, and you can mount up with the wings of eagles, those strong eagles. The words of Cain, the first murderer, 
My burden is heavier than I can bear. Is your burden heavier than you can bear? Is the pressure too great for you? Are you about ready to give in and give up? And I said, Oh, said the psalmist, that I had the wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. You notice the difference the between the wings of a dove and the wings of an eagle. The wings of a dove, he wants to escape life. And how weak that is compared to the wings of an eagle that God can give you tonight. He'll give you a strength that you never knew you had. He can give you a peace and a joy and a love that you cannot supply for yourself trusting Him. Yes, the psalmist longing to escape has become the cry of our world today. How up to date the Bible is. It is the book of life for man, it's never changed. Also true in the psalmist day where we read, I'm full of heaviness, and I look for some to take pity. But there was none, and four comforters, and I found none. I wanted some comforts, I wanted somebody to help, but I Me. couldn't find anybody. And Job said, but the eyes of the wicked will fail, and escape will elude them, you'll try to escape. But it'll elude you. You think there's an escape, but there is no escape. No escape from life, and its pressures, except one. Jesus said, I'm the way the truth and the light. No man coming to the Father, but by me no way out. To those who feel that there's no way out of their problems, Jesus promises a way out. Says Borgio. In the last moments, his of life said, I've provided in the course of life for everything except death, and now alas, I'm to die. Entirely unprepared. There's only one person in history who did not have to die and that was Jesus Christ. He said, No man take it from me, I lay it down myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it out. But he volunteered to do something for you that you were going to have to do for yourself. He volunteered to take your sins, to take your judgment, to take your hell on the cross. For you so God can say tonight, Your sins are forgiven. If you died now, you'd go straight to heaven. That's what happened on the cross. That's what happened when he was willing to die on that cross. Do you know that Christ? Jesus was perfect. He was free from sin and its effects. And yet he died on the cross. Why? He was born to die. On the cross, he took our sins, for he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. But the Bible says he rose again from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. And think of it, he was raised from the dead last week. The London Times had an article and there was a statement of belief. The resurrection of Jesus Christ, signed by what someone has said, were a list of many of the finest scientists in this country. And Paul wrote to the Romans, and said this, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth for Lord Jesus, and shall believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shall be saved, yes. I believe that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead. He's alive. And the Bible says he's coming back to tell us that there's more. The best is yet to be. For to this end Christ both died in Rome, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. I know that I'm going to heaven if I die tonight. I'll be in heaven tonight.